Hello students, this is your science teacher, Mr. Pierce, with some basic information on lab procedures and how they should be written and how you should follow them. A basic understanding of what a lab procedure is would be simply to say they are directions. They are directions for how the scientific process should be happening. But not only are they directions, they are very, very specific directions. And you may stop and say to yourself, Mr. Pierce, that's all fine and dandy, but why do our directions have to be so specific? Why do I want them to be so exact. I thought sometimes if it's a little more um, open-ended, it's kind of up to interpretation. It's not always that it needs to be open-ended. Sometimes they need to be repeatable. And not only sometimes, but they always need to be repeatable. Here's an example. We are trying to study the effects of Gatorade on cross-country runners. A very basic, very bland procedure may be as simple as saying, have cross-country runners drink water one day, time them in a mile, and then the next day give them Gatorade, time them in the mile again, and then you compare your data. But that's not very specific. A very specific procedure gives as much information as possible. So a very accurate procedure may say how much Gatorade, when to give it, the temperature of the Gatorade, not only the temperature but also the flavor of the Gatorade. That is making it very, very specific and very, very direct on what you're expecting. And then of course you could always go back and compare your information from one day to the other but you want to be as specific as you can. So remember, when reading lab procedures or writing them, you want to be as specific as you can so that others can read your information and repeat it and have similar data. Sometimes kids always ask, how many steps do I need? You need as many steps as it takes. Thank you for following me on this brief tutorial on lab procedures. This is Mr. Pierce. Goodbye.